reading from our Old Testament and, and Gospel lesson. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he would take away the serpents from us. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show by what kind of death he was going to die. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Every time we come to this Numbers chapter 21, I always try to find a way that I'm going to preach it, but there's so many different ways that I can preach this text that it kind of gets jumbled up in my head a little bit because there's so much that's going on. First of all, we have the Israelites who came out of Egypt by the very hand and voice of God. And as they came out of Egypt, they were then free. But then they were hungry. And so what did God do? He literally rained down food for them. They did not have to work. They did not have to toil. They didn't have to do anything but collect it, eat it, and not store it. And by not storing it, they were trusting in the Lord that He would once again provide for them. In other words, they were back in Eden where they wanted for nothing. And God gave them all of the food that they could eat. And yet, what did they say? They said the one thing that if we say today, we should be anathema, and that is, we hate this loathsome food. For any Christian to say this about the Eucharist is to say it about Christ himself, and to say it about Christ himself is to agree with the devil. And so the Israelites said that very thing. We hate this loathsome food, the food that you rain down from heaven, the food that you give us freely that we don't have to work for. We don't like it. And so God did not say, oh, I'm sorry. Let me send down different food. How's your palate? How do you like your wine? Would you like turkey? He didn't need to say any of those things. Instead, he sent serpents that were on fire. And this is the why I always preach this. Fiery serpents. Note that. Serpents, snakes, which none of us like, on fire. To bite the people. Because they complained against the provisions of God. And I am convinced, and clergy are not exempt from this. In fact, clergy most often will employ this very thing as if we alone know the will of God. But I truly believe that if God were to send sin serpents to us today and we were all bit and we were all caught on fire, we would still point at each other and say, look at you, you're more on fire than I am. I truly believe that. Clergy do it worse than anyone else, or perhaps better than anyone else. You're more on fire than I am. I must have sinned less than you. But doesn't that miss the entire point? The Israelites who were bitten died. And those who did not die were given something to look at. Moses, he lifted that fiery serpent, set it on a pole, lifted it up, and everyone who was bitten, even the dead people, it says in Hebrew, even the dead people, when they looked upon the fiery serpent, they were made well. For whoever sees the fiery serpent lives. So what shall we say then? What shall we say about that fiery serpent placed on a pole? 
Well, we come, of course, to today. Holy Cross Sunday. We look upon Christ the crucified. Note that when Christ was crucified, he was given over to our sin. He who knew no sin became sin for us. We should repent of all of our sins. We should repent even more for the fingers that we point at one another. We should repent all the more for this is the judgment of the world. Satan. The one who comes after us time after time after time. Yes, even clergy. Satan slithers up the chasubles of even the clergy. And then what shall we say? If the pastor isn't the first to repent, the people will never repent. I repent to you for all my sins, all of my transgressions. And I pray that you forgive me, and in forgiving me, you repent of your sins, and Christ forgives you. Because here's the reality. We all look to the cross and see Christ Himself. And if you look at, the crawl, at our cross right behind the altar, you can see Christ who has died, but He is in a serpentine position. That is, that Christ is in the shape of a snake. The one lifted up on the pole. The one who in the wilderness, that if sinners look upon him, they will be forgiven, they will live. And he and God, through Christ, will continue to give us food for the ages. Dear Christians, this is my body, this is my blood, given for you, shed for you. Eat it and you will live. Drink it, and you will live. Eat it not, and you will die. This is why we have communion each and every Sunday. Because the merits of that, Christ, that, that cross, that holy cross, the blood that ran down from His most sacred veins, and the water and the blood that poured from his side poured into the font and onto the altar so that we would receive the forgiveness of sins. The justification by grace through faith. And we serve Christ. We serve the one who hangs on that cross. And yet Christ did not remain on the cross. He was brought into the tomb. And then what, did, what happened to him? Before the resurrection, he descended. He went into the fiery place where the serpent, who truly is on fire, stood waiting. Satan, the ruler of this world and the king of hell. The true fiery serpent. And when Christ went down, what did He say? Scripture says that He proclaimed victory. Not preached. Proclaimed victory. He said, these people are mine. They are not yours. You may not touch them. You may not, you may not give them. I will not give them over to you. These are my own. I, when I'm lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. This is the true grace that we have. This is the hope that we have. This is what every single person in that graveyard has. The promise. Because believe me, we will all be in that ground. I myself, will be buried at Augustana. That's what I desire for myself. But this is what I know for myself. And this is what I know for you. You are grains of wheat. And when grains of wheat 
fall into the earth and die, it remains there. It remains there alone, the body in the casket in the ground. Seemingly no hope. That's what the world sees. But if it dies, if the Christian dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. So we little grains of wheat that die and fall into the earth and die, we have a promise of a great stalk. We have a promise of a Christ who was crucified on that cross. Christ who is the one who sprouts up and brings with him as he sprouts up every single piece of seed. But all of a sudden their seeds no more. But they are two great stalks. And those great stalks reach to the very heavens. And that's where we shall be. We, sh and we, we shall be reaped. And we who are wheat shall be gathered into the barn of heaven. And those weeds shall be cast into the fiery hell. And I'm okay with both accounts. Christ our Lord is the one that does the planting. Christ our Lord is the one who does the raising. Christ our Lord is the one who by the cross makes the cross holy, but by whose blood makes us holy. That's what we have. If we were bit and set on fire, let us not point to each other and say, you are more on fire than I am but rather run to the baptismal water that puts it out. Because in that water we receive faith. In that water, if we, take, if we turn it back in time, goes right back into the side of Christ. If we look at the blood on the altar, turn it back in time, it goes right back to the side of Christ. But as it is today, they are given to us as lavish gifts. And because Christ died, and because He was the first fruit to be buried and to be raised again, we who will die, and they who are dead, will rise again. Promise. A guarantee. For them, no fiery serpent can reach them. For us, we still need to stamp it out. That's what Christ does. He comes to us and gives us the Holy Spirit that we would stamp out those fiery serpents, turn to one another, forgive each other, and be done with it. Let it have be in our minds no more. Forget it. Forgive and yes, forget it. Let us be Christians. But the only way that we can truly be Christians is to hang on to the cross. If we hang on to the cross, then in its shadow, we have death, but a promised resurrection in that death. Thanks be to God that as we cling on to that cross, we are given over also to life. For between life and death, there is a great chasm. And the only thing that can bridge the gap between life and death, that can fill that great chasm, is the cross in which we walk from one side to the other, giving thanks to Christ, the one who died. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen. Amen.